Thank you all for allowing me the guilty pleasure of having a conversation that I have not been allowed for a very long time. I grew up in a household where apartheid was rooted in the memory of my parents and in my grandparents. But for some reason, they never shared that with me, even though it disrupted my father's life completely. Maybe it's because they wanted me to succeed in a world that was different to the one that they grew up in. And then coming to St. Helena Island seven years ago, I was faced with a lesson that I was not prepared for. I would encounter human remains. And what made it even worse, being completely honest with all of you, is that I had to pretend that it didn't mean anything. But through that, my time has come to talk about it to ask difficult questions about it. And to sit here amongst all of you, I feel like this is an opportunity for all of you to remind me that I'm not crazy. <laughs> but also to tell you that this space has been under threat for 30 years and continues to be threatened. They are becoming less isolated because of the airport, doesn't it seem to you that it will begin to evolve on its own? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the answer is, no. um, we're here in the United States and it hasn't evolved. Uh, and we're in Brazil <laughs> and it hasn't evolved. And we're all in the Caribbean and it hasn't evolved. evolved. It doesn't evolve. <laughs> until certain structures are destroyed. I mean, it doesn't evolve. And I, I, I think the message that's coming from Nia is that what she thought was a local struggle is in fact a global one. At the airport on a no plane day. We've been having a lot of those. The airport site is just the hub of it. We also have a 14 kilometer road connecting two valleys, Rupert's Valley and Prosperous Bay Plain. But going through communities, disturbing people, disturbing heritage and archeology, span it's, it's not been an, an easy project.
I'm standing on the most significant trace of the transatlantic slave trade. And there is nothing here to show that. If you didn't know, you wouldn't feel anything. How could you know if no one tells you or reminds you? Yeah. I feel like everyone's to blame. It's not just government, it's everyone. Everyone that's ever had a part to play in this that have done nothing and continue to do nothing. Myself included. We've still got slave remains in a pipe building in Jamestown for eight years. The airport development has overshadowed the urgent need for us to deal with this. There was a, a budget allocated under the airport development for the reburial of slave remains. Can't we at least start using that to get some things done? Shouldn't we have somebody to lead on this with participation from local people? Just to read something very quickly from the lead archaeologist. The human remains from Rupert's Valley are unique. They are, quite simply, the only assemblage in the world that purely points to the middle passage of first-generation slaves straight out of the slave ship and only weeks out of Africa. Yeah, all the old maps say African, old African it's just burial like ground burial or burial yeah, it's his graveyard. So, so in actual fact, if whoever was building the road had done their research properly, they would have known there was a graveyard there. No, they did not. They did. They did not. Didn't change their plans. The way that the liberated African remains are being treated now, they're not part of society. Which is why I say they're almost like can still considered as slaves. Mm. They're not considered as people. So, what's the plan? This is to mark the temporary resting place of 325 liberated African slaves brought to St. Helena against their will. They made it no further than Rupert's Valley. They now wait in this room for their final resting place. Us as a group, we decided to get everyone else involved because it's not our story to tell. I'm Namibian. I have no right to speak for the saints, but we can't do it alone. And we don't really know what we want to do yet. And we want to figure that out with everyone else here as well. You know, it would be good to have something and I think it should be the responsibility of the government and the island as a whole to have a really good memorial here on the island. Hello, hello, you are right? All of those things that you are pontificating now is already in process. It's just that you've got to be realistic because, the, because of the airport. You know, things are moving along slowly because of the situation. So we have to be realistic about this. You know, it's no good getting up, jumping on a bandwagon and say, you need to do this, you need to do that, you know, nothing's been happening. The point of this group is not to try and uh, point fingers or do a witch hunt on why the three to five are still in the pipe store. We're making this everyone's responsibility. Everyone is accountable, not just government, not just access office, not Basil Reed, not Heritage Society, not National Trust. It's everyone's responsibility because we are all linked to this story. What we're also trying to do is raise awareness about the heritage that has seemed to be forgotten. Everyone knows so much about Napoleon because they've worked so hard on telling the story. We're talking about 30,000 African slaves that would have passed through St. Helena at that time. Approximately 9,000 are buried in Rupert's Valley. That's double the population of the island today. A third of them were children. A third. 
yeah, 3,000 buried in Rupert's. I use numbers, but we need to connect to these people. It's not their fault that their story was not told, that they couldn't leave something behind to say who they were. We're going to do something special this morning, which is uh, a DNA test. This is the first, I think, here at St. Tobham. And Nina, why are we doing this? It's all about trying to build that connection between what lies beneath and Rupert's Valley, so we can see what's really going on in St. Helena. So tell me if you can just rub yeah. that on the inside of your cheek. Um, yeah, quite with vigorous pressure, sorry. I want to see blood. I think what happens with the liberated slave remains mm -hmm. is an uncomfortable is, subject. Very... No one wants to really uh, address it. We've sat in the studio and, mm -hmm. and discussed that something needs to happen, and that's come through all the time. Something needs to happen, something needs to happen, but it never happens. I don't want to see us in two or three years from now still talking about what needs to happen with the slave remains. surprising some historians. History is being literally uncovered in Lower Manhattan. While government officials have withheld comment and have sealed the site from the public, Fox News has learned that archaeologists have discovered a historic site at this location at 290 Broadway, where a federal office building is scheduled to be built between Duane and Reed Streets. How will the government then acknowledge the fact that this was a cemetery? For the two points that the community has requested that I cannot satisfy, are the reinterment of the skeletons within the building and also the creation of a museum on the site. The region has been able to come with a $250,000 contribution to interpretive display, which we will do. It is not a pa uh, It's obviously not a pacifier. The discovery of the African burial ground said to be the largest burial ground for early African Americans in the United States is a link, a key link, between our present and our past. These bones tell a story. They tell us of a life of hardship made harder because of ignorance and prejudice. Peggy King Yordo, coming from a family steeped in the civil rights movement, swung into action to preserve an African-American burial ground in Lower Manhattan, becoming heavily involved in saving others across the world. When they say, I didn't say you can start. Make them stop. Hulle kan nie begin sonder dat ek nie kyk wat daar aangaan nie. Okay, okay. Sorry guys. If we uncover a body now, then I'm running, okay? I don't know if you guys know, but this whole power station was built on burial grounds, eh? Yeah, okay. The power station, the fuel farm, Everything up to, if you follow that white line there, is burial grounds, eh? Up to 10,000 bodies lie where we're standing now, all the way to the back there, yeah? Sorry, that's why I freaked out now when you guys started without me. And it's not just bones, it might be beads, it might be anything else that would have been buried with it. Might be a cloth material. And don't take anything. And if you, oh. yeah. <laughs> if you see anything, just, you know, try and get my attention. Break it in, yeah. Just break it off. Piggy? Nina. I can't believe it. It's. I know, I know. I, I, I found myself being consumed once I started reading the emails about what was going on, and I really almost don't even believe it, quite frankly. What do they think this site is? I'm trying to find out what that divide is. It's been a history, a long history of people coming in from the outside and telling St. Alenians how to feel and what they need and what they don't need. Okay. The site is not known and is not recognized as a cultural heritage site. 
it is recognized as a future site for development. Well, it's, yeah, you know, my grandmother used to always say, race is a powerful thing. And it, it does things to people. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody likes to hear that they're a bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. The recommendations to Congress that I authored for the African burial ground in New York, it could serve as a playbook. So you can't talk about the history there, meaning in the States, without talking about the history of St. Helena. Mm -hmm. And we can't talk about the history of St. Helena without referencing the history and what we know from North America. One of the world's most isolated outposts joined the 21st century today when the British island of St. Helena welcomed its first commercial flight. After months of delays and a problem with high winds that labelled it the world's most useless airport, now they've worked out a way around it. And that's why they've got a small aircraft doing the job. Saints, as they're called, are hoping for a silver lining. Now we're in Rupert's Valley. Wow. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So now as we go further up, the latest map puts all of this, yeah. including the jail site, yeah. including the power station, right. right up the valley to where you hit straight into... The base of that hill? Yeah. Uh-huh. As the upper burial ground. Are you kidding me? This is huge. Yeah. This is massive. I hear you. There is such an opportunity here to do the right thing and mm. set the example mm. and set the standard yeah, yeah. for a lot of other sites. It's, I, it, to me, it's a no-brainer. You know, you don't turn your back on something like this. It's just, it's immense. Mm. It's immense. Coming here, really being sensitive to people thinking that, oh, you're going to come here and try and tell us what to do mm -hmm. with our thing. And for me, I'm coming here to bear witness to how you guys decide to treat it. Mm -hmm. So you treat mm -hmm. it any way you yeah, want to treat yeah, it, yeah. but witness. I'm a witness. Yeah. Because this history is tied to my history, and go. I know your history. There we go. So I'm here to bear witness. And then you show us what you're going to do. Yeah. Oof. Oof. The objects, when they were excavated, were kind of earmarked from the start for an exhibition to Liverpool Slavery Museum. There were four boxes, all found within the 325. Mm. So this is all from one burial. All of these beads? This, or this just box, that box? And, and including these. So they're all packed yeah, according in to individual burial. box according to burial. Wow. Hair. And there's also a braid. Oh, well. a braid. <gasps> yeah. I wonder just, if that was a, a male or a female's. The, the paper there indicates the exact burial it's from. So we still have the capability if the community wants to rebury these with the mm. correct individuals, mm. yeah. individuals as well. Mm. Right. Yeah. That was always part of the plan. Okay. If, if that was decided, then that, that can happen. Okay. Whoa. That's amazing. You see the... Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah.
Were these Blue, ever put on green. display for the community yes. on Saint Helena? Uh, no. That is so criminal. I'm sorry. That's like, I can't get over that. Yeah. That they could go away. Oh my word, and not. Oh my word. No, that's. Anyways, mm. I guess the time is now then. Welcome, everyone. With this exhibition, we are actively reaching back and doing away with this disconnect that everyone talks about, but no one can really define it or describe it. We are all witnesses to this story. Once they're reburied, I hope it's just the beginning for everyone else as well, just as it, as it is the beginning for me to bear witness to my own five years of not paying attention to the story like I really should have or like I really could have. Though our experience in North America may be different from yours, we are tied through the transatlantic trade. You are the Middle Passage. You are that history for us. We are exactly as you are. You may have a different accent. You may have different customs that you engage in. But we are you, and we are connected. The history of Napoleon and when he was here was happening at the same time when Africans were here. They are not separate histories. Reclaim the neglected history, because the history was neglected. Unlike New York, you have burials in place. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm jealous because we have a concrete jungle. Everything is underneath buildings and sidewalks and streets and subways. Be a part of renewing the awareness, because it's in you doing that and your children doing that, that the story will live. Um, we're going to discover your story together, mm -hmm. Tammy. It reads, Tammy Williams, your story begins. Genetic blueprints are very much shaped by immigration, warfare, migration, conquest, and choices. Therefore, our DNA is a unique combination of genetic markers that are found all over the world. We are all made up of all of us. The DNA study of the 325 in the pipe store shows that they came from West Central Africa. Tammy's autosomal DNA results show that 15.6% of her ancestors over the past 10 generations come from West Central Africa. You okay? It's incredible. Exactly the same area as that uncovered from 325. 15.6%. This result shows that this 15.6% of African descent would have occurred in the last 250 years, which would clearly fall within the timeline for the liberated African establishment between 1840 and 1872. Really ask yourself, why are we not taking care of the burial grounds in Rupert's Valley? Why is it okay to take care of Napoleon's tomb, but completely and utterly ignore what's in Rupert's? And I'm not accusing anyone of anything, but just ask yourself that question, because it's not part of our tradition not to take care of our ancestors. We won't go disturb St. Paul's Cemetery, but no, Rupert's is okay, because we need to develop there. So it, it's, it's this hangover that will continue you know, your future generations, unless we confront it right now. It doesn't need to carry on this way. It's not okay to disturb a sacred ground, and that's what it is. Careful. Oh. I can't believe Peggy's gone. I didn't expect her visit to, to change me as much as it did. Today is my last day as a Basil Reed employee. I'll be joining the National Trust 
and I'll be leading the African reburial project. And I've been asked to join the Liberated African Advisory Committee. I feel for the first time that I can actively be a part of making things happen. Welcome back. Nina Hayes is with us this morning. Nina, last time you were here, we had some comments come back from the community saying very openly, you don't speak for us. Mm -hmm. You are not representative, mm -hmm. really, of the Saint community, mm -hmm. um, even though your husband is a Saint Alenian. Bit of a toughie, I know, but mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that? It's interesting. Um, if you think about the whole debate in the States right now as well with immigrants. I mean, the States was made of immigrants. And what is St. Helena but immigrants? And, you know, I've been battling with that question as well, um, trying to win the hearts of the saints. It's, it's, just, it's just my makeup. It's, it's, you know, it's, I want to be accepted by the community. That's natural. We, we, no one wants to be ostracized. It would be great if all saints could recognize the significance of the site and own it. But me knowing better and speaking for those that don't know better, I'm okay with that. I love St. Helena, but I'm an African. <laughs>